So our theme for this Ango period is the bardo, and the bardo of everyday life. I've given a few talks on this subject and I'm going to continue tonight with some more thoughts on it. This is a very rich topic for us to practice with. Um, and it's not an esoteric topic. It's for all of us in our Zen practice, whether you're beginner or intermediate or been practicing for a long time, it doesn't matter. Um, I feel that this perspective um, gives a very intensified and rich view of what our life is like day to day, moment to moment. And it can very much inform all of us in our, in our Zazen practice. So it's, it's a very interesting and rich way of looking at our practice and at our life. So I, I hope you find it that way too. <clears throat> so the word bardo, it does have a translation. And in uh, one of my previous talks on it, I had forgotten what the translation was. Um, so I, I recovered that. And uh, bar in Tibetan means in between. And do means, um, so, so bar means in between. And it could also mean no man's land. Okay, or no person's land, okay. no person's land. So I'm going to say it's the, the land that isn't possessed by any person. That's the traditional definition of a no, no man's land. But it's also the land in which no person exists. Right. That's the bar. The do is a tower or an island. This is Trungpa Rinpoche's definition of bardo do. It's like a tower or an island. So it's that structure or stability within the no person's land. So he, he presents this image of the island in the middle of the river, right? So the river is the in-between one shore and another shore. It's active, it's fluid, it's changing, but there's something stable. There's some kind of ground in the middle of that changingness. What is this ground? It isn't the self. It isn't the self that's grounded in the midst of this flow and flux. <clears throat> What is it? And Trumpa calls it the immediate experience of nowness. So it's awareness itself. It's the awareness of the awakened mind. That's the ground in the midst of the flux. <clears throat> For those of you who haven't um, tuned into the, the previous talks on this. So the, formally the bardo in Tibetan, it comes from Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan Buddhist word refers to that time place in between uh, one death and the next life. Okay, so die and then something happens and then you reincarnate. <laughs> so it's the what's happened is the bardo. <clears throat> but we're not looking at it in that way. We're actually, we're actually looking at it in the way of what's happening right now. So we take it down a level and we, we can look at it as a, this in between, in between different states. <clears throat> so Trungpa says, Generally, all bardo experiences are situations in which we have emerged from the past and we have not yet formulated the future. But strangely enough, we happen to be somewhere. Okay, so we can all relate to this, right? The past is gone, the future is not yet formed. I mean, at a variety of levels, we can all connect with that. But strangely enough, we seem to be somewhere. We happen to be somewhere. We are standing on some ground. 
which is very mysterious. Nobody knows how we happen to be there. Nobody knows how we happen to be here right now. Right now, we're in the Bardo. Mysteriously grounded. What is this that persists moment to moment for you? What's the light within right now? That has not extinguished. Do you experience yourself this way uh, as being continuously grounded in this mysterious ground? continuously present in this way. I can't say that I have continuously grounded myself in that. Right. <clears throat> I'm elsewhere than right here. In fact, I find myself looking to, with some level of consciousness, to the either shore whether that's past or present or the previous relationship and the next relationship, the previous job and the next job, the previous day and the next day. The mind is pulled out there to either shore, both shores, sometimes back and forth. I wake up sometimes at night and then some of my like worries and concerns are just swimming through my head. That's kind of, you know, night demons. <laughs> and I just watch them closely and it's, it swims from past to future, past to future, past to future, you know, back and forth. So the mind is trying to orient itself with that. That's that's what we do. The mind tries to do is to orient itself with respect to past state and future state. And that gives it something, some sort of stability. But see, that, that's the self that, that isn't comfortable with the flux of the river. That isn't comfortable, isn't comfortable with that, that, that chaotic in-betweenness that <coughs> is the nature of reality. So it looks to the stability of what it perceives to be, well, st- perceives to be the fixity of this other shore, either shore, which is really just an idea. <clears throat> When we fixate ourselves in that orientation, we're creating the conditions for our own suffering because it's not in accord with reality. And Zen practice ultimately is about being fully in accord with this reality of our fundamental changingness, this impermanence, which means everything is always changing. Nothing is fixed, especially the self. All the efforts to fix the self or to fix the condition will come to naught. And we will be disappointed and we will be sad and we will be angry and we will be craving of a stability we can never have, a permanence that we can never have. 
Blue Cliff Record, case 55. Dogo and Zengen went to a house to show sympathy for a community member who had passed away. Zengen, who was the student monk, hit the coffin when he and his master Dogo approached. Hit the coffin and said, alive or dead? Master Dogo replied, I won't say alive, I won't say dead. Zengen demanded, why won't you say? Dogo repeated, I won't say. It gets even more dramatic because they leave the memorial service and they start going back to the monastery and halfway back, Zengen again said, tell me right now, teacher, if you don't tell me, I'll hit you. Dogo said, you may hit me, but I won't say. And Zengen hit him. <laughs> hey. There's a follow on, but I'm going to stop here for now. So this is a, this is a really core, just, uh, uh, what's the, a war horse koan is what one Zen teacher called this, the, a war horse koan. It's just right to the bedrock of what our Zen practice is about, which is about truly experiencing the truth of life and death. All right. I use this koan in my, um, the workshop that I do as part of the cause to pause contemplative caregiving training that we do once or twice a year out at Willow Farm. And I, I mention this also because um, we have our cause to pause for this year coming up um, next week. It starts next Friday. So it's a, it's a workshop that takes place over five, five days. So it's two weekends and then the intervening Wednesday. And it's for those who are interested in pursuing um, conscious dying, you could say, um, as, as both a caregiver or a um, companion to a family member who may be, uh, who may be dying in, in the end of life process. Um, to be able to bring forth the wisdom of the dying process in the most conscious way. <clears throat> so I present this call and I, I do the first part of that. It's a half day on the Zen basis of contemplative caregiving of this type of work. And this is, this is for professionals who are you know, hospice workers or end of life caregivers, or those who are just interested in it, either for their family members or just for their own growth and spiritual development. And there's actually spaces open for the one that starts next Friday, next Friday if anybody is interested in joining that. I would encourage you, if you have the time and interest to devote to it. So I, I, I bring this at the end of my of my segment, because most of them aren't Zen practitioners, and it's a pretty, pretty powerful koan. It's a pretty confusing koan, right? What the heck is going on with this? But what I want to bring out is what Zengen is doing here. I'm, I'm sorry, what Dogo is doing here. I mean, first off, let's ask why, why does Zengen ask this question, right? It's a, it's a deep question. You know, what's the nature of life and death? So, I mean, who, who would go to a coffin and say, tell me if this person is alive or not? <laughs> <You know? laughs> he obviously has a, has a great curiosity, which is stimulated. It's like, what is going on with life and death? So he has some sort of um, understanding that our current understand, our, our normative understanding of life and death, that it's not quite right. Okay, there's something off about it. And that's what our dharma says, is that there, we don't understand life and death. So what is the nature of this? <clears throat> so these are actually the two shores of the formal bardo, right? Birth and death. Death, we die, bardo, then we're born. That's the traditional bardo. So he's, he's, he's investigating what we understand to be the shores of our bardos. 
Is it really a shore? Is it something fixed? Is it that shore or this shore? And Zengen won't say. I'm sorry, Dojo. Dogo. Dogo won't say. Won't say. So awareness finds itself in this place of flux, which is every moment. And then the mind seeks to orient itself with respect to the two shores it has created, life and death. Is it alive or is it dead? Am I alive or am I dead? Okay. We create the opposites in order to orient ourselves. And of course, we always have a preference, for usually, you know, most, most usually, for one of the opposites. We prefer life over death. We prefer abundance over lack. We prefer, you know, one, one, or, one or the other of the two, usually. <clears throat> But this isn't our dharma, right? They're not opposite. Life and death are aspects of the great reality. They're not opposites. In each moment, there is always birth and there is always death in every moment. Right now, we can experience that moment to moment, rising and falling what arises within your body and your mind, and then what passes within your body and your mind. Dogo doesn't answer because any answer would reinforce Zengen's delusion that life and death are separate. It is a great question. And in fact, Zengen keeps kept asking uh, the question even after Dogo, his teacher died, and he kept asking it even of other teachers. And he eventually had a big enlightenment experience when another teacher he went to said exactly the same thing that Dogo said. <laughs> I won't say, I won't say. <laughs> he said, why won't, why won't you say? He said, I won't say. And finally, <laughs> I'm not sure how much longer on, it was probably many years actually that he'd been working this, with this. And he had a big enlightenment experience, profound enlightenment experience, and all of his doubts about life and death were resolved. I realized that uh, Zengen actually asks, why won't you say? And Zengen won't even tell him why he won't say. <laughs> I told you why Dogo said what it wouldn't say. But I gave you an idea there so that maybe there's Maybe I've overspoken by telling you why. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ask me again, I'm going to say I won't say. <laughs> and I'm not going to say it again, so you either have to go to the video or just work it out on your own. <laughs> and working it out on your own is really the point. That's, that, that is the energy of the practice. That's the practice, is to really ask yourself that question. Alive or dead? For yourself, resolve that for yourself. You can actually ask yourself that. Am I alive or dead? Really investigate that. That can go really deep. Really deep. That'll go all the way down to the mysterious ground. It's present right now. Bardo contains this mixture of states, alive and dead, sad and happy, abundant and lacking, powerless and powerful, confused and clear. You and Bardo right now. How do we respond to mixed states? How do
How do you respond to mixed states? We can have trouble with mixed states. It can be disoriented. We want to be something. We want to be fixed. It can be difficult to feel mixed states, um, let alone understand, you know, have clarity around what's going on. And it can feel chaotic right, or disorienting within the body and then chaotic in the mind. And this can be disturbing. Right? We could even feel crazy as we seek some kind of fixity of our understanding or of our present, you know, our felt sense within our bodies. And we can start to feel crazy. You ever feel crazy? I mean, really crazy. Like, re like, like you think you're losing your mind. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is an amazing portal to your deepest wisdom as you start to see the, the chaos of what's going on, the, the, let's say chaos, but multiplicity, the immensity, the plurality of what's going on within your body and mind. And actually being fully present with that, that, that insanity can actually turn to wisdom Very quickly. <clears throat> Trungpa's book on the bardo of everyday life is called Transcending Madness. <clears throat> so it's quite, I think, um, an evocative description of the bardo is to really recognize this kind of quality of our mind, a psychological place, psychological, emotional place of feeling crazy and how close that is to a real deep awareness of your true nature and awakeness. But we have to be fully present to this whole spectrum of the psychophysical, emotional um, activity, whatever is present, whatever is going on for you. To be wholly present to it without fear or craving. It's the fear and craving that comes in and complicates and compromises the ground of awareness. That's the thing that's fueling that movement of the mind to the shores. Life or death, alive or dead. The aspect that I like to bring out in Cause to Pause with that koan is that life isn't what we think it is and death is not what we think it is. So when you're faced with someone who is dying, you know, physically dying, and then there's, there's the story that, oh, I'm alive and they're dying. I'm not dying, they're dying. But they may be more alive than you in some ways then you may be dying or even dead in some ways that they're not. People who are dying are incredibly alive, right? Oftentimes the awareness that opens up, their heart that opens up, consciousness that opens up, is something that we're oftentimes you know, close to, don't experience. So who's to say? You know, they're dying and then they're dead. We're alive. So to be present and aware of it all without that fear and craving mm -hmm. driving us towards the fixity, that's sanity. That's the sanity. <clears throat> Thank you.
And we can all practice this in our zazen. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. You know, shikantaza, koan, even breath practice. Just to be fully, immediately present to the changingness of your experience, to the flow and the flux. You know, even there's kind of a limit. There's, there's these meditative practices of labeling, you know, labeling what's, I don't know, you know, anger, sadness, or, you know, this feeling or that feeling. And sometimes it's like even that word is too much. It's too much. It's too limited. It's like, okay, sadness, but then there's also the happiness, you know, or it's like, I'm feeling that, but I'm feeling this as well. <laughs> there's so much, right? So the labeling is almost, it's just like a, a rudimentary, basic and very helpful uh, technique to, to help learn how to turn your attention and keep your attention on the internals, right? But at the deepest level, things are much more multiplicitous and much more subtle and much more changing that in the time it takes to apply a word to something, it's already changed. Okay? So that's how deep it is. So we leave the language aside and just even go into the breath practice and then just feel, feel, feel that deepest texture of what is fully present with you. And so much is. It's beyond words, deep, rich, and subtle. Mm. The bardo. Yeah. This, this wonderful place of our practice. We come alive in the bardo. Your Buddha nature comes alive in the bardo. As the bardo. No shores. It's the in-between without edges. We say maha is the vastness that that which is so big that there's no uh, boundary. There's no, there's no, no outside. It's so big there's nothing outside, right? So my bardo is the in-between where and there's nothing that is on either side of it. It's all in between. Right here, right now. And you can't go, you can't depart from it. You're right here in it. <laughs>